Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at the intersection of graphs. And apologies again to my year 11 Maths 1 class uh, for being away again today, but hopefully I should be back tomorrow for a double. Okay, so we've done this before. Um, you might remember back to looking at when we were sketching linear functions, okay, so our straight line graphs, where we might have had a graph such as y equals x plus 1, we had another graph, let's say, for example, y equals negative x, um, well, x on 2 plus 4, let's say. Again, they're probably irrelevant. But remember, the intersection would be those points that had a common x-coordinate and the common y-coordinate. In other words, if we found the solution to both of these equations, that meant the x and the y solutions that would give me that point of intersection and hopefully you remember that that re is referring to simultaneous equations so that's basically what we're doing today however you know that the unit we're looking at is quadratic functions so what we'll be looking at is going that one step further and again you've done this quite a few times uh, I guess algebraically um, instead of looking at the intersection of two straight lines, what we're going to be looking at is the intersection of a curved line, such as a parabola, and a linear function, such as um, that straight line I've just drawn there, and we are wanting to find out the intercepts. And you can see what's going to happen most of the time when you have a straight line and you have a parabola, they are going to cut or intersect in two different locations. And that's why when we, we have done solving with nonlinear functions, there's often two co um, coordinates we get. We get the x1 and the y1, let's say on that left-hand side for that point, and then we end up getting another solution here, and we end up having those two different sets of solutions. Now, of course, that won't always hit in two places. Um, they might hit in one place, for example, like that, which means if it hits in one spot, we refer to that line as what we call a tangent. Okay, and that's really important, um, certainly later on in mathematics. Um, and it might not hit it at all. Okay, you might have a nice big straight line like this um, that just doesn't hit it. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the cases for the most part that it hits it in two places. Um, later on in mathematics, certainly this year, we'll start looking at calculus and we will start looking at um, things to do with the area between the curves in calculus um, or integration. And it's really important that in order to know or be able to apply that area, we need to know those points of intersection. So it is really important that we are able to do this, not just with parabolas. However, we were looking at today at parabolas. Okay, so let's look at an example of what you might have. Find the points of intersection of the functions y equals x squared, y equals x plus 6. Now, with linear simultaneous equations, we know there are two methods. We have the elimination method, and that's usually if they're set up that way. So um, things such as x plus y equals 7 and x minus y equals 12. Okay, and because the x's and the y's and the numbers are next to each other or underneath each other, that's a better method. If they weren't, we would then use the method called substitution. And usually, again, if it was set up nicely, for example, you might have x plus y equals 3, then you might have y equals x plus 7. And that one's more, um, I guess, geared towards substitution because you're told what this y value is. In this case, it is x plus 7, and you just substitute them. Now, when we look at a question with nonlinear, and I might write that word down because this is a nonlinear simultaneous equation because we had the x squared, the quadratic function, we will be using the substitution method because obviously if we wrote underneath the y equals et cetera, et cetera, you're not be able to, you won't be able to subtract or eliminate those different uh, terms. So we're going to use substitution. So we're told in this function that the y is also equal to x squared. So what we're going to do is replace that y with the x squared. By doing so, we're going to make x squared equals x plus 6. And hopefully there you can see that we've actually formed a quadratic equation with only one unknown, or unver uh, one variable, which is the x. So we're going to whack the x's all on the same side, making sure that the x squared is positive. 
and we ha have it equal to zero, so um, in sort of general form, and then we solve. Okay, now if you're lucky enough, we'll be able to use the product and sum method or just straight factorizing. Here we can see the product is negative six, the sum is negative one. Um, three times two is negative six, and negative three plus two is negative x. So we have x minus three, I'm just going to redo that, sorry. x minus 3 brackets x plus 2 equals 0. That makes negative 6. And when I add them, it makes negative 1. Which means my solutions are x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. So I guess what we're looking at here, if we had to sketch this graph roughly as such, we have the graph of y equals x squared, which would look something like this. And then the other function of y equals x plus 6 might look something like this. Now obviously here, it's a bit hard to see, I haven't drawn that nice and accurately, we only see it hitting one place, but obviously at some point this parabola is going to come up and those two lines are going to meet. So obviously that's why you can see graphically it can be quite hard sometimes to actually uh, do this properly. Um, all right, so we're going to solve this. Um, so we've got those solutions there, sorry. We've got the x-coordinates, but what we've got here, for example, is negative 2, and we've got this one here as uh, positive 3. What we don't have are the y-coordinates. So we know that to get the y-coordinates, I'm simply going to sub in the x values into one of these two equations. The first one's probably the easiest. When x equals 3, x squared is 9. When x equals negative 2, y will equal positive 4. So what we're going to have then is our two solutions. We're going to have 3, 9. And then we're going to have um, negative 2, comma four and that kind of makes sense there because you can see that one was much higher and that one went off my graph that goes up to nine so there are my two points of intersection okay let's have a look at the next question this is the last one we're doing if you want to pause it have a crack at it and then come back to it make sure my class you're copying these down where do these two functions meet so again we're looking at the simultaneous equations for non-linear that is not set up particularly nice Two ways you could do it, I guess. You could simply take this part here and sub this exactly where the y is. That would work. If I put that in, we get x minus brackets, 6 minus x squared equals 6. I'm going to get rid of those brackets with the negative, which makes negative 6 plus x squared equals 6. And then we can then start to get everything to the left-hand side and rearrange it, etc. Um, if you don't like that, if you think you might make a mistake, um, what you can do perhaps is rearrange this function to start with into making it y is equal to, um, let's say, uh, plus the y and take away the 6, we get x take away 6. And in that case, you can just plot the 6 minus x squared on the left hand squared side, side there, sorry. So 6 minus x squared equals x minus 6. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. As you can see here, if I plus the x squared across here, you can see that's exactly the same as what I've got there. I'm going to take away the 6 and put it over here. I end up with um, x squared, I'm going to put that one first, plus x minus 12 equals 0. So either way, what I'm trying to do is to come up with that quadratic equation because now I can solve that. If you have to use quadratic formula, sometimes you might because they might not be um, nice factorizing questions, then so be it. Don't forget about finding your y values at the end though. But in this case, um, this isn't too bad. I'm looking at this to be 4 and 3. So x plus 4 and then x take away 3 equals 0. Leave me with the solutions. x is equal to negative 4 and x equals positive 3. Of course, I need to sub it back in. And again, it doesn't matter which of the two equations that I sub those back into. Um, I can do the top one. I'm going to use the first one. So I'm going to put here um, y is equal to for the first one, 6 minus, well, x squared is four, um, so 16. Therefore, y equals um, negative 12. And the second one, we've got 
y equals 6, take away your x squared is 9, and that will give you equals negative 3. Therefore, my solutions are negative 4, comma, negative 12. And we have positive 3 and then negative 3. Just be careful. Always write your solutions as I have done. We're looking for the points of intersection, so they need to be written as coordinates. Not just that, if I didn't put this part, I'd be looking here and going, well, which is this the y value for? Is it for the negative 4 or is it for the positive 3? Be a little bit more specific so the marker can clearly see where you're at. Once again, for my class, please make sure you've written those couple of examples down. Have a look through the book if you need some extra help. You've got your work to get along with. Um, for this lesson, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. For everyone else, guys, I hope this made a bit of sense to you and this was useful. Have an awesome day.